Okay. Uh, so the aim uh, uh, of this uh, talk uh, uh, and, and the whole motivation of the of the this uh, short paper was to help the hardware and software developers to um, export, analyze, and apply models uh, from already trained convolution coalesced uh, settlement machines. Uh, so uh, the focus here is only on inference, um, and uh, everything is related to the uh, settlement machine uh, unified code uh, at GitHub. Um, if one uh, implements uh, settlement machines uh, based on, say, uh, our, uh, your own uh, methods, uh, this will not necessarily apply. Um, this is a rather practical uh, oriented talk, more kind of a how to. Um, uh, and, um, and the motivation is that it's, in my opinion at least, it's not straightforward uh, to understand uh, how the literals and patches um, uh, are structured. And this is especially the case for the convolutional set of machine. Uh, to understand it, one really needs to dive deep into the code. Uh, and this, uh, again, in my opinion, I come more from a hardware side, not that experienced with the programming, but it's a pretty complex uh, C code that uh, handles the, the encoding. So um, uh, um, I work mainly with uh, hardware uh, uh, for the, based on a convolutional settle machine. and. Uh, and now recently on the coldest uh, settler machine. So um, this talk will be based on that. And uh, the emphasis is on uh, images. A brief recap of the um, uh, coalesced settler machine. So uh, in contrast to the vanilla settler machine, uh, the coalesced um, one has only a single pool of clauses. And they operate on all the outputs. Um, and, uh, but they have different weights uh, per class. And these weights, they are assigned uh, and they are obtained uh, during the training. So um, the, the class sum expression, uh, as you can see, is very simple. Uh, and uh, uh, it ends up just being the sum of the weights where the clause is equal to uh, one. So this is a very hardware uh, friend friendly um, uh, solution. Uh, there are some uh, properties with the coalesced settler machine uh, uh, compared to the vanilla settler machine. Um, the coalesced one seems to make better use of uh, uh, fewer clauses. Um, during training, the peak accuracy uh, is uh, reached uh, faster. And also, if you have uh, imbalanced training data, uh, the coalesced settler machine seems to be more uh, robust uh, towards these. So um, I have worked mainly with the uh, convolution um, for a set of machine, and um, uh, the main benefit, um, as I can see it, is that uh, with this approach, uh, you uh, reduces the number of features and literals to process simultaneously. Uh, this uh, obviously reduces the hardware complexity. Um, uh, the disadvantage is uh, longer processing time because you need to slide this convolution uh, or a convolution window over the complete image and process each patch separately. So, um, so how many patches for uh, for an um, image do we need to process? Uh, all this is ba uh, based on uh, on the original uh, coalesced settler machine uh, paper by. Um, uh, Ula and others, um, we uh, consider uh, an image of dimensions X and Y and with C channels. Um, then we have a convolution window uh, uh, with the, these dimensions and uh, slide values. Uh, what are the steps of the convolution window? And then uh, the, uh, the convolution set the machine over the convolution coal <laughs> set the machine uh, performs an evaluation uh, over B patches given by these expressions. And um, uh, with um, during inference, what is special with the convolution set the machine is that um, a clause will output one if it recognizes a pattern at least once in any of the uh, B patches uh, evaluated. 
So it's uh, an OR uh, function over uh, all the, what you could call the sub clause outputs uh, during the convolution. Um, so how many number of, what is the number of features per patch we need to, to uh, consider and process? Um, if we encode each pixel in an image with um, uh, U-bits, and uh, typically uh, one can use a thermometer code for this, because we need to have a kind of a level indication uh, of the value. Um, and similarly, we need to also uh, append uh, the patch position um, within the window. And also this we can do with uh, thermometer uh, encoding. Uh, one hot is also one hot encoding is also possible. Uh, with this we um, uh, we get the following uh, equation for the um, number of features per patch. Uh, the first part here is related to the uh, window itself, um, and this is related to the uh, y position, and this is related to the um, x position. So we need uh, x minus wx to, to encode uh, uh, the x position of the patch. So uh, an example um, for Boolean 28 by 28 images, typically for the MNIST uh, data sets. Um, this is a single channel uh, image, C is one, and we Booleanize it with uh, simple thresholding. Um, so U is also one. Um, it, the very good results have been achieved with a convolution window of 10 by 10 and stride values of one. Uh, with this, we, we need to uh, process um, 361 patches. And uh, the number of features uh, per patch is um, 136 uh, bits. And the uh, number of literals uh, is uh, two times this, 272. Uh, <laughs> this is pretty straightforward, but uh, we we'll also need to have uh, exactly the same numbering as is used uh, in the TMU code. And we start the numbering in the upper left corner. Uh, in, uh, this is for the image with zero and increases with one when we move the patch window in the X direction, then start on the 28 for the second row and so on. And uh, also important within the image, Within the patch of the image, we need to we also start uh, the numbering uh, in the upper left corner, and uh, in this case we have a ten by ten window, so bit number ninety nine is in the lower right corner. Uh, this shows how the patch position uh, can be encoded with the thermometer encode with thermometer code. Um, uh, for instance, uh, with the, looking at the X position. And if we, um, uh, X position zero will be completely to the left, then we encode this with all zeros. We, if we move the patch one step to the right, we put a, a one uh, on the uh, least significant bit and so on until we are at the uh, uh, rightmost position of the patch window, um, convolution window, and there we have all ones. And the same is the case for the Y position uh, for the rows. So this table uh, just summarizes uh, how uh, the features are uh, indexed uh, uh, based on, on this uh, configuration in the TMU code. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, uh, it's important to also have the LSP at the right place and so on. So, but uh, the Y position comes first, then the X position. Uh, and then uh, the 100 bits from the uh, uh, patch uh, window. Also, this uh, comes the, um, come the uh, negated versions. Um, these literals, um, they are organized in the memory uh, in the so-called chunks uh, of 32 bits. All this you can find in, in this uh, uh, file, uh, and uh, um, everything is performed in the function TMU encode. Uh, unfortunately, I, uh, I'm presenting this remotely. I would have liked to, very much like to be uh, present uh, at the, uh, in Newcastle, 
but uh, I had planned to to uh, uh, ask how many people have actually looked at uh, this one. Uh, uh, that would have been interesting. Um, uh, here, just is, this is corresponding to uh, to the this table. Uh, you see, we place the x bits first, then comes the y bits, then the the ten by uh, image bits from the ten by ten window, and the negated versions. And there are a few bits which are not used, so we need uh, nine so-called chunks uh, for um, for storing um, the literals from a single patch. Another example. Um, uh, I like very much the results presented by uh, Uli Kristoffer yesterday. That was really a great breakthrough for color images. So uh, I hope this uh, this makes this uh, 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 image encoding for, for multi-layer images uh, even more important now. Um, uh, this is typically the case for sci 32 uh, data sets with uh, C uh, three channels. Also here, uh, we encode uh, each pixel value with eight bits, like shown here in the lower um, right corner. So uh, this is also to, to get a kind of level representation for the value. Uh, one can use a different um, number here, of course, uh, but you cannot easily just put this pure binary uh, value there. Uh, you need some range or va uh, level indication. A collusion window of three by three is applied here and stride values of one. Then we get, uh, uh, for this case, we need uh, to process 900 patches and uh, with 274 feature bits and uh, uh, thereby uh, 548 uh, literals. And uh, this table just shows the, shows the um, uh, yeah, overview uh, of um, of the indexing uh, of a, a single patch uh, for this configuration. Uh, also here, we start with the Y position, X position, but then uh, for each position within a patch, uh, here we have a three by three uh, patch. So we start, uh, we have coordinates from zero, zero to two by two. So uh, uh, first, the value of um, the, the thermometer encoded value of the pixel at um, coordinate zero, zero for channel zero is um, uh, placed here. Then uh, the same for channel one and then for channel two. Then we move the patch over the, uh, um, sorry, then, then, the, then the, the, the values for the next position within the patch. And uh, here are the final um, uh, pixel uh, values within the patch. So uh, um, uh, 274 bits in total are, uh, are needed for the feature bits, and then comes the negated versions. Uh, to extract the model itself is very straightforward. Uh, I think, in my opinion, the tricky thing is to just get the correct understanding of the indexing of uh, which literals and so on. But one can use the get TA action method um, indexed by, by the number of clauses and the number of literals. Then you get the two-dimensional array for the TA actions. Here, uh, the TA, TM is an instance of... Um, the TM code as classifier. The same can be applied for the vanilla um, um, uh, coalesced, uh, vanilla convolutional settle machine. Uh, uh, possibly well, there you need to, to, to care of also the, the polarity. Um, uh, for the weight you need to, uh, for the courses you need to take care of the polarity as well. Um, for the weights, uh, there's a method uh, called get weight, uh, indexed by the number of clauses and um, number of classes. So by this, we can uh, easily extract uh, the weights uh, from a trained coalesced settler machine. So um, uh, we tested this. Um, uh, for uh, an inference only um, uh, hardware design uh, implemented in uh, VHDL. This configuration had um, 
28 uh, clauses um, operating on the Boolean uh, uh, images of the MNIST dataset. And um, it was a very good test of whether uh, uh, we had understood, uh, say, the whole uh, indexing uh, and, uh, and um, exact bits uh, uh, pattern correctly uh, for, for the model. And uh, we obtained uh, uh, exact correspondence between the class sum per test sample. And there were also the test accuracy for the simulations in the uh, VHDL. Um, and uh, when simulated on the TMU. So it's it's very useful to, to be able to extract uh, a model from a trained uh, um, uh, set of machine and then apply it in a in a inference uh, design um, to check uh, the implementation. So um, the conclusion uh, is that uh, we have described uh, uh, the literal and model structure uh, uh, for for certain machines um, uh, for uh, when operating under convolution, um, and the uh, hope is that this uh, can be uh, useful uh, for other people uh, working with um, who want to say uh, yeah extract the model and uh, work with that directly, um, and uh, if necessary, uh, the source file are available uh, from the authors um, upon request. Thank you for your attention. Great. So are there any questions from the audience? OK, I have a question. So I, I'm wondering, so I'm very used to convolutions in, uh, in deep learning. So I'm wondering, how, how, is, how does this compare to, to the deep learning scheme? And, and is it? as scalable as uh, at least I have the impression in the deep learning? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, um, uh, um, because uh, using smaller uh, convolutional windows, you, you, you are able to process uh, very complex uh, images. Of course, uh, it takes time, but uh, uh, because compared to processing one image uh, uh, simultaneously, but uh, that's not practical. So, uh, but uh, but you can also apply several convolution uh, window uh, uh, operating simultaneously uh, to increase the throughput. Um, uh, regard, I'm not that familiar with, with convolutional network, uh, say, the, say the detailed operation on, 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 um, on um, uh, for deep learning, but, but uh, I, I heard that you don't need to apply this position encoding. So that's a, that's a different uh, thing, maybe. Uh, uh, but anyhow, there, there's a certain overhead for position encoding. But that's, that's uh, given that one can achieve a good performance, that's, uh, that's acceptable, uh, I guess. Yes, any questions from the audience? And now, did I spark any ideas? So I have I have one uh, other question. So, it, it, have you compared like the, the different uh, like like it, so? Let's say if I took my, the ten by ten data set um, and and just used normal setlib machines, so just everything is flat bits. So how how does it compare in in performance if I do that versus convolutions? Uh, the convolutional uh, setlib machine performs uh, better, uh, slightly better, I think. Uh, uh, so there, there's definitely a, a benefit uh, with that also uh, respect to test accuracy. Yes, great. So, okay, thanks for answering and let's give them a applause.